Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand, please. I'm going to ask to close the casket, please. Thank you. Let's begin. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven on the earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your, sh your shades at your right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Almighty God and our Father. The hours of the morning, God, we pause in your courts to say thank you for the breath of life. We thank you, God, that you have been with us through the course of the night and you wake us up this morning in our right mind. You give us strength and journey in mercies to be here, Holy Father. And though it's not an easy one, it's a sad occasion, but we are here anyhow and we are grateful for that privilege. We're asking you now, Almighty God, that you will touch each heart as we come to lift up your name and to say thank you for the life of your son. Oh God, we pray today that your words that will come to us will help us, Lord, to recognize that we are here just for a short time. And oh God, our, here, our staying here must give glory and praise and honor to you. Mighty God, you, are, you have created us for no other purpose but to worship you. And so I pray today, if anybody here in my voice today that are not praising you, oh God, a time they will begin now because you're about to come. Take over now, Holy Father. Anoint your servant as he speaks to us today. And may all of us live here rejoicing, though there's a sad part of our heart, but we're rejoicing to know that we serve a mighty God. Have your way now, Holy Father, and continue to be with us through the remaining portion of this program. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Bless your name. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a sad occasion to say good morning, but we who are alive, we still have to give God thanks. So I just want to use this opportunity to extend condolences from the church family to yours. And we pray that as you go through your moment of bereaved, we pray that the Lord will continue to give you the strength to keep going on. Death is a part of us and I want you to know that it will always be a part of us as long as life uh, lasts. So I want to welcome you to our Thanksgiving service this morning and we pray that as we go through it, as I it say, it's a Thanksgiving service. So as we go through, you're giving thanks for the life of your father or your brother or uncle or whoever he was to you. We pray that you will just do so with a heart filled with joy, knowing a life that was well lived. If you need to use the bathroom facilities, it's to my right, your left. Go around, the male is to the left and the female is to the right. All right, so just in case you want to relieve. And if you want to cry some tears, we have enough tissue or we have enough uh, uh, hand towels that we can give to wipe your eyes. So don't be afraid to cry those tears if you, if you have to, all right? All right, we're going to ask you to stand with us again one more time as we do the opening song. Just over the mountain and the promised land lies a holy city built by God's own hand. As the weary footsteps gain the mountain's crest, we can view our homeland of eternal rest. Shall we stand together as we sing lustily? 
Just over the mountain in that promised land lies the holy city. Lies the holy city built by God's own hands. As a weary footsteps in the mountain's crest, we can view our homeland of eternal rest. Can we hear you now? We, we are near. Splendor gleaming from the dooms afar. See the glory streaming through the gate. Touch our very soul. We'll enter nevermore to roam. And the angels singing, We are near. We know we are near. We We have long been told of that wondrous city with the streets of gold. Now, with rapture vision, we can see in there when his walls of Chester and his mansion fell. Come on, no, we are near. See the splendor gleaming. See the splendor gleaming from the dooms of child. See the glory streaming through the gate. I John, there we soon will enter nevermore to roam. Hear the angels singing, we are near. Faithful few, who oh, oh, keeps God's commandments, faith of Jesus too. There we lift our voices through the endless days in the sweet songs of gladness and the songs of praise. We are near. Yes. We are near. See the splendor. See the splendor gleaming from the dooms afar. See the glory streaming through the gate. Such a there we soon will enter nevermore to roam. And the angels singing, we are near. My brother, my sister. My brother, my sister. We will, will meet, us, meet us, us there. Oh, yes, in the land of sunshine. In that land of sunshine where there will be no care. Accept us message and the him be true. Then when Jesus come and he will call for you. We are near, we know, we are near. See the splendor gleaming from the dooms afar. See the glory streaming through the gate. Our are there will soon, will enter nevermore to Hear the angels singing, we are near, we are near in home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our kind, compassionate Father.
Indeed, we come before your presence once again to give you thanks and to give you praise. Indeed, we ask you for your divine presence in this midst at this opportune time. Father, we ask for your powerful hands and for your broad bosom. So we who are mourning can rest assured, knowing that with you all things are possible. See us through this dreaded time, we pray, Father. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to come down and soothe our souls and lead and direct that everything done here will be done in accordance to your will. Forgive us of all our sins, we pray. Lead and direct, we ask. In your sons, then we say, amen and amen. You may be seated. And as welcome has been offered to us all thus far, I will be one of your hosts this morning. And I'm asking each and every one of us here today, as you mourn, and as the morning will take you off limits, I ask you to remember to put those phones on silence especially the smart ones because they always outsmart us. And we would have seen the invention how they even started to think for us. So they may be thinking that in this quiet hour, you may need a song or two. So please put them in silence for me, please. So we can all have a smooth day. And we can all say it was good for us to be here. Amen. I am Elder Davis. And you can see the rest of elders who will be at your service through this Thanksgiving service. We will start with, as they are listed in your program, so you can just follow and just proceed to the platform right in front of me here and do your part. Anything outside, I will indicate to us as we go through. So at this time, we'll have Nicola Addison who will do our first lesson, followed by our string of tributes. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. And in all things, we need to give thanks. Amen. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 1 to 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and, I will, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. At last... And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't matter the tears that you and I may shed. There is this one man 
with a towel that will never out saturated with tears. And he's always there to entrust that our tears are all wiped away. Your program will be reflecting the mission Gabriel. But based on records, they are not here as yet. So I'm going to ask Faye Addison Lifer to proceed with her tribute at this time. Each and every one, my name is Faye Haddison Leifer, and I'm living in London. I am the niece of Uncle Roy. Uncle Roy was a very hard-working person, very kind. He would give us everything when we come down to the country. He would prepare food and everything. Honey would be there. I would visit him on every occasion that I'm in Jamaica. And he would prepare. Also his family. We always welcome. Uncle Roy was a very blessing person. And he shall surely miss. Rest in peace, Uncle Roy. Family, have a good bless. Bless up the family. Amen. Amen. That's the beauty of technology. And as they viewed online at this time, we also extend our greatest sympathy to you all. Duane Addison, followed by Brother Alvin Johnson. So we now have Duane Addison, followed by Brother Alvin Johnson. To the officiating ministers, Pastor Brown, elders, visiting friends, good morning. Indeed, I stand here this morning to give a tribute for one whom I have known for many, many years. In truth and in fact, I've known his father, I've known his mothers, I've known his brothers, I know his sisters. So I'm not here to give you a painted picture that has no real meaning. Not only that, the first wife that he had was a cousin of mine and I was there at the wedding. So I can surely say I know this man. I know him as a very hard working man. One that cares for his family. One that has provided food and the table and roof over their heads. He was a caring, loving, and a very kind gentleman. I could remember sometimes the both of us were talking. And he said to me, whenever you had problems, 
it is good for you to share the problems. Because when you share the problems, it helps you along the way. It does not remain the same. And those words I can never forget. I know him as a farmer. I know him as a very good trade man. One that was a very helpful person in our community. And I'm here this afternoon or this morning to say that he has done well. He may make mistakes because all of us have made mistakes in life. There is none of us that is here today and has never made mistakes. And if he had made any mistakes in his lifetime, I'm so glad that God has given him the opportunity that he can straighten them up. Ladies and gentlemen, this man, whom has now left us, he has left us with a legacy. I want to endorse and to give thanks for his son, Wayne. Wayne. I'm not saying here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying here that the family has not played their part. But where I am concerned, Wayne stood out for his father. Amen. I want to say this. Many people, whenever they have old people, they rejected them. They don't remember the goodness and the kindness that their old people have done. Wayne and his wife has played their part. Amen. And this morning I want to say thank you Wayne and may the Lord bless you and may brother Roy soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine thank you Dwayne Haddison okay so at this time Good afternoon, everyone. We are here to celebrate the life of Roy Addison. I am Dwayne Addison. And I can tell you that Uncle Roy was a good man. I never spent a lot of time with him, but for the time of me spending around Uncle Roy, he more always made me feel very welcome and very much like a real family member. I always remember every time when me and Auntie Faye and my father and Chichi would have got on and Uncle Rai, you know, go, go give him a little check and thing. He was always ready for make space available for we stay over the night and thing. He said, same time, go and get some honey for we because he didn't know if we were going to stay or not. And he make sure say Rosie or Olivia and Wayne them go send go get some fish and start look about some food for it. Now that is what me always like about when time I go around my family them. And Uncle Roy was one of them people where he make you truly feel like your family. So Rosie, Wayne, Olivia, I never meet John, but when I just big up on herself, I know so the father. I got always, always in a all our heart. And we never ever forget him. So we know when I will cry, but but the New York right now and all me I do I remember the good times and with Uncle Rai when time him come out. So sleep well, Uncle Rai. And for the rest of the family. Just go on all the vibes. See? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And as that nephew just made mention, 
of those good times that he spent with his uncle. I just have a flashback that he was once called the only man. The only man. And he always said to me, because I was at liberty at one time to be his barber. Yes, I used to cut his ear. And my grandfather used to cut his ear also. And as I made mention to the family around the back that we used to have a good time. He used to tell me a lot of things that has been said about him in the district. But at no time was he being daunted by them. And he always said to me, because I work in Kingston and some of the times going to work in the early morning, he would ride in with me when his vehicle is down. And he always said to me, Shane, a lot will be said about you, but do your best for yourself. Don't try to please people because you will never be good for everybody. Do good and good will follow you. That was his words and his encouragement to me in his lifetime. I do miss him also. Even in his last moment, when at times the sickness will trigger us in when he's at church. And his daughter and granddaughter would try to calm him down. But whenever time I put my presence there, he always recognizes that he needs to be quiet. He needs to calm himself down. And that was the respect I get. And he displayed to me, and I know that he would do the same to all that comes in contact with him. So, keep faith, my friends and family members. Brother Addison, not because we're at his funeral, and as Brother Johnson said, we're saying these things. That man lived and displayed a legacy in this humble community. So at this time, I'm going to have the second lesson, which will be done by Normally Brown. First Corinthians 15. Verses 50 to 58. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither though corrup corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I saw you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be, be raised incorruptible, and it shall be changed. For this, corrupt, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy string? O grave, where is thy victory? The string of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my, be my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, also abounding in the love of the Lord, for as much as ye know that, thy, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I must let you know that 
I'm speeding ahead of myself because I don't know I love the word of God. And I've moving so fast like I'm in, I was in Budapest. So at this time, I'm going to ask Leon to come and give his tribute. And that one is also via the phone. Virtual, virtual. Morning time in London, and I'm sending out my condolences to the Addison family, home and abroad. Yeah, I, I have met Mr. Um, Addison on two occasions, once at the airport, another time when we were invited to his home. Faye's a regular visitor, that's Faye uncle. I'd like to send out condolences to each and every one of the Addison family who's feeling the pain and the loss of this very, very good man that I met and kind and loving and a man who's known in the area for making honey over the years and very jokey fire time. Uncle Rye, I'd call him, enough respect. Well, maybe he's gone to a better place, who knows? I'd like to say, once you're born, whatever you believe is, whatever religion you are, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're king or queen or emperor, one thing for sure in life, we're all going to die. And it is his turn to leave this planet, you know. So we give big respect to Uncle Rye. May he rest in eternal peace and strength to him. So celebrate his life. And he's gone but won't be forgotten. Rest in peace, Uncle Rye. Leon Leifar says so. Big up on yourself. Enjoy on yourself after putting him away. Who want to cry will cry. Who want to have happiness of memory will remember that. As so I said, all right, enough respect. International Airport Group, are they here yet? Mission Gabriel. Okay, so we are we ready to sit down? Yeah, I I have met who's feeling the pain and the loss of this very, very good man that I met and kind and loving and a man who's known in the area for making honey over the years, and very jokey fire time. Uncle Rye, I'd call him. No. Morning, everyone. My name is Lewis, and I just want to extend my condolence to the bereaved family. And we're at the point where we'll be taking up an offering which will go toward the community service department of the church. And this department contribute to a worthwhile cause. It um, helps the less fortunate in the community. And we know the wise man said, he that has pity on the poor, lend it to God, and you will repay him. Now we know God's repayment is not the 2% that we get at the bank. And so, I'm just asking us to bow our heads, close our eyes while I pray. Loving Father, we come to you another time. 
the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Nothing I bring, Lord, but to your grace I cling. Lord, I know it's not anything good we have done why we are not the one in that casket. It's just because of your grace and your mercy. And we know whatever you allow to happen, whatever you do, your words tell us that you are righteous in all your ways and you are holy in all your works. And so we thank you that we have such a God. For the Lord, as our deacons are about to go to collect the offering, Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to put it on the heart of those who are here who you have blessed to return to you, Lord, so the less fortunate can be helped. And Lord, whatever would have been returned, we're asking you, Lord, to let it go to the honor and the glory and the lifting up of your name. The mercies we ask of you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Say amen. 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 So as you would have seen in your program, the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. And as the deacons go around, I just ask you to sing with me. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastor's green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. My soul hath now restored again. And me to walk doth make Within thy path of righteousness His own name say He lives in He lives I know that my Redeemer lives He lives he lives, he lives within my heart. Yea, though I walk through death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill. For thou art with me, thy rod. And stop me comfort still. He lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer He lives, he lives within my heart. The last stanza. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. He lives. He lives. I Yes, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Amen. 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 Is Mission Gabriel here as yet? Either Norman Manley. Okay, so We'll move in the next phase of tribute. Hello, 
uh, our next phase of tribute will start off with a tribute from Elder Maj Sitladi. congregants all protocols are observed and I know it is on a, an occasion that none of us like him in church Amen. I must pause to give my condolences from my family family have been united together for many years but we know this is the journey of life God knows best and he will not give us more than what we can bear so my brothers and my sister of the Addison's family, be courageous. God understands and he will give you the comfort that you all need. Amen? Amen. So I'm here this morning, you know, with feelings that reflecting back then and now. But into the hands of the Lord I present myself. So it is indeed a privilege and an honor given to me to do this tribute on behalf of the Portland Cottage Seventh-day Adventist Church family for the life of the late Roy James Addison. And this is the first time I know his middle name. So he was an apostle, as an apostle name. Amen, church? Amen. Yeah, man, we said in our word. Give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. The words of a song says, Watchman, blow the gospel trumpet. Every soul a warning give. Whosoever hears the message may repent and turn and live. Sound it for the heavy laden, weary longing to be free. Sound the Savior's invitation, sweetly saying, come to me. This trumpet was sounded and the invitation was extended to all to come to Jesus as they are. Roy accepted the invitation, started his journey by coming to the meetings and attend services on Sabbath in order to learn more about the message, have a clearer understanding of it, and to develop a relationship with the Savior. You know, this part of Jamaica, this part of Jamaica have been hit by disasters on every side. And the disasters affected not only our personal belongings, but also the church belongings. And I want to extend to us all that he accepted the rites of baptism, surrendered his life, and was baptized. I do not recall the year, but I know he was baptized and became a member of the Portland Cottage Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I say, Amen. Amen. Time, no, 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 take out of God's hand. Him know everything. He was an active member and served willingly in the different departments of the church and was always punctual for worship. Having his Bible and the church hymnal, we plenty of in our church now. He was a deacon, Sabbath school superintendent and also teacher, home missionary leader then, now is lay activities. He had a passion for singing Baz, Aubrey, and was given the task to conduct song service on Sabbath and night meetings, church, brothers and sisters, you know, just turn up so like dead. He would gesticulate as he held the hymnal in the left hand. And the right hand was just directing the congregation. Brothers and sisters, those were lively moments. 
And I'm not speaking with any makeup. These are factual things. And he had some very favorite hymns that he would always enjoy singing. And these, I listed a few. There is one beautiful one. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Another, let every lamp be burning bright. Church and brothers and sisters, if ever time we need the lamp of salvation to be burning is now. It is almost time for the Lord to come. Another message. Holy day, Jehovah's rest. Praise him. Praise him. And this one, I have a song I love to sing since I was redeemed. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Sweet hour of prayer. The coming king is at the door. These are some hymns, lively hymns that echoed in this tabernacle by Roy Addison as he directed song service. He supported the programs of the church, such as crusades, that is now known as evangelistic meetings, harvesting gathering, church building, and harvest. For harvest, his contribution was bottles of honey that he prepared from his apiary. As was told before, he was a farmer and he had his apiary. Brother Roy lived a full life, allowing God to be his guide. The words of an hymn sage, and I quote, We've no abiding here. Sad truth were this to be our home. But let this thought our spirits cheer. We seek a city yet to come. We have no abiding city here. We seek a city out of sight. Zion its name. The Lord is there. It shines with everlasting light. But hush, my soul. Nor dear repine. The time my God appoints is best. While here to do his will be mine. And his to fix my time of rest. Roy James Addison. Sunrise February 3, 1945. Sunset July 31, 2000. And 23. May God bless the family. Sleep on our brother. Thanks to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have four more tributes, and I'll announce them in chronological order. We'll have the first one, it will be a video link, not a video, an audio link from Rosemary Addison, daughter. Next we'll have from Cherie Anson. This will be done on behalf of son Wayne Anson. Next we'll have a rendition from Mission Gabriel. And then we'll have from Norma Lee and Norma Leisha Brown, granddaughters, in chronological order. Dad's favorite song for me to sing is I'm free. To sing a song or every time somebody would ask me to sing something and I'll go to him and say dad what do you want me to sing he will say sing I'm free so although he's not here with us anymore we just have to know that he's free God, why can you come? 
Good morning, everyone. A tribute to Dad from Wayne. As I stand here today, my heart swells with love and gratitude for this, the remarkable man he was. He was not just a father. He was my inspiration, my greatest teacher. His legacy is etched in every corner of my life, and I carry his wisdom, his strength, and his unwavering love with me every day. He taught me, he taught me the value of hard work, not through words alone, but through his tireless efforts to provide for our family. 
my dad's dedication to family was rock solid. I have always looked up to him for it. I hope to be as, ad as hardworking and devoted to my family as he was. Dad, you were not just a father. You were a friend, a mentor, a source of unending support. Your belief in me, your belief in me gave me the confidence to pursue my dreams and your guidance shaped me into the person I am today. You taught me to be kind, resilient, and to face life's challenges with grace and strength, as well as to find joy in simple pleasures and humor, humor in every, in, within the toughest situations. Dad taught me, Dad, Though you're no longer physically with us, your spirit lives on in every smile, every memory, and every lesson you imparted. You may have left this world, but you are forever in our hearts. Thank you, Dad, for your love, the wisdom, the laughter you brought into my life. I will carry your legacy forward and I promise to continue to make you proud. With love and eternal gratitude, Wayne. I also want to express gratitude to everyone that gave me guidance and support during the time of dad's illness. I'm thanking God for the church family for being there for me in the time of need. And though I cannot mention everyone, Uncle Pooh, the voice of reasoning, Uncle Baz, my rock who stands beside me, Sister Winsome and her team who gave me the strength I needed, Norman and the hospital staff who took good care of dad, Rosemary, Olivia, Peter, David, and John, they gave me strength to carry on. All friends and family, thank you. The memory of Brother Roy leaves me with this. Why go through life sad when you can laugh? That's the saying. Throughout today, let us take a moment to laugh in Dad's honor. I put my trust in God. Low. Good morning, everyone. Can we have a little more volume on this one? Or on the others as well? All right. This one is off. All right, good morning everyone. Um, so I'm doing this song on behalf of the family, more so Brother Wayne and family, and um, I'm also, the song that we're doing, to be honest, I prefer to sing about Jesus, always. <laughs> That's my, I live for that. When Jesus is glorified, it's, it's honorable. Uh, this song, however, you know, society since 2000 
has eliminated loads of values that we once had. Our style changed, our fashion changed. Technology has been our brains. And for that, we've not been able to sever the moment where we can think for ourselves. Technology is actually thinking for us. And I just want to say that Brother Roy was the, uh, the kind of man that old school, you know, he was brought up in the time when values were important. And when we're losing people like these, it makes us wonder, what will the next generation be like? For those who are left behind, we have to maintain the values of past generations. You know, if you don't have a pot, if you don't have a, 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 a stove to cook and no food now, cook, cook by the hood fire. Catch up the cold pot. Put little hashes on it. You understand? We can maintain our values that if one thing don't work, another will. The good old days is what we love. The good old days add the values. And if we draw back to them, we can put them into today. We might be losing our elders, but let's not lose our values. Let it not die with them. Let's maintain it. Teach them to our children and our grandchildren. Don't feed them pampia snacks and kill them off early. Give them good food. Not give them a fruit juice where them sell out a road and a fruit juice and a fruit juice cousin. Not give them real juice on the mech. Save our children. Save their health. Chee chicks and all. Can't help them. Let's go back to the good old days. world's gone crazy and grandpa take me back to yesterday when the lines between right and wrong didn't seem so easy do lovers really fall in love to stay Stand beside each other comes what may Is a promise really something people kept Not just something they would say And then forget Do lovers really fall in love to stay Do daddies really never go away Oh, oh, grandpa Tell me about the good old days. Grandpa, everything is changing fast. They call it progress, but I just don't know. And Grandpa, Take me back into the past and paint me a picture of long ago. Do lovers really fall in love to stay? Stand beside each other, comes what may. Is a promise really something people can? Not just something they would say and then forget. Do families really bow their heads to pray? Do daddies really never go away? Oh, oh, Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Grandpa, look, everything is changing fast. They call it progress or technology, but I just don't know. And Grandpa, let's wander back into the past and paint me a picture of long ago. Do lovers really fall in love to stay? Stand beside each other comes what may. Is a promise really something people kept? Not just something they would say and then forget. Do families really bow their heads to pray? Do daddies really never go away? Oh, oh, Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Do lovers really fall in love to stay? Stand beside each other, comes what may. Is a promise really some? Not just something they would say and then forget. Do families really bow their heads to pray? Do daddies really never go away? Oh, oh, Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Oh, oh, Grandpa. I'm on the uh, pilgrim and stranger in this unfriendly world that I roam. For Jesus, who brought me from darkness, <laughs> has <laughs> promised me yeah. a heavenly home. In the Bible, we read of a city whose builder and ruler is God. And someday when this life is over, his beautiful sights will behold. I'm longing for home, the sun go way down. I want to go where sweet rest can be found. I'm just about through this old house of clay. I'm leaving this world for glory someday. When the last weary mile have been traveled and the gates of the city swing wide, oh, what a glad feeling it will be to know that heaven is mine 
beyond the dark veil of my sorrows. With Jesus forever I'll be. Oh, to that city I'm going. Behold the Savior to see. I'm longing for home. I'm longing for home. The sun go way down. The sun go way down. I want to go away. I want to go away. Sweet rest can be found. Sweet rest can be found. I'm just about through. I'm just about to. This old house of clay. This old house of clay. I'm leaving this world. I'm leaving this world for glory someday. I'm longing for home, the sun go way down, I want to go away, sweet rest can be found, I'm just about through this old house of clay, I'm leaving this world. For glory someday. I'm just about through this old house of clay. I'm leaving this world for glory someday. Amen, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. Who don't want to leave this world? I don't know who don't want to leave, but I surely want to leave for glory someday. We are tired. I'm tired of going to funerals. I'm tired of getting the sad news, death. I'm tired of it, really tired of it. And I want to go home for glory someday. We'll now have the remembrance that will be done by if Basil, if Basil Anson. Okay. I must say greetings the officiating ministers, the officers, and the members of the SDA church. I want to thank those who have come in from far and near to celebrate the life of my brother. I want to start with some lines from a poem in which my brother loved very much from Mark Anthony's speech by William Shakespeare. He said, friends, Roman, countrymen, lend me your ears. I've come to bury Caesar and not to praise him. Amen. The evil that men do live after them. The good is often interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus had told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously as Caesar's answered it. I speak not to this prove what Brutus speak, but here I come to speak what I do know. Hallelujah. I won't say any more of that poem, but my brother loved that poem very much, and when I was asked to do the remembrance, it comes to my mind to say this poem. I know my brother, as a Christian, grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church. And when Sister Cicladine have 
said so much about him. Some of the things that she said, I have them on my mind to say. But I just want to give you an insight of how we grow. My brother was a family man. He spent, I spent much of my time with him. I believe that I spent more time with him more than all my siblings. Because he was at home with my mother most of the time taking care. And I was at home while my other brothers are gone out to look life for themselves. And we instill in me principles. I want to say that I know him as a father and a brother. When I look at it, my elder brother, everybody in the community call him brother. That is Voltiman. Everybody say brother Sonny. And when they want brother Roy, they call him brother Roy. If you come into the community and ask for, you ask for Roy, you won't find Roy. They will add to find Roy until you say brother Roy. Right, so brother is a name that instill on him. Right, so but he got an additional name to the brother because I've never heard my mother say Roy. My mother always said daddy. Yes, because I don't know and some elders in the community say daddy. So I don't know if it's because of a fatherly role that he played. But I know mama always said daddy. Yes, he always have good and chores, carry things to family. Amen. So we know then that he always go and bring things to the relatives who, who need it. Yes, I know him to be a fisherman. Yes, he go to sea very early in the morning. Sometimes even at four o'clock in the, in the morning, just after midnight, he get up and gone to sea because they, they, in those times they, 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 they set pat and you know that he, they have to go early to see. So they went, he went to see and he get fish to support the family and to sell and to make a living. Yes, so he, he have a tendency of rising early. So I know him to be a very impatient man when it comes to waiting on people. If, you, if you're going out with him, you, you have to be on time because he will leave you, right? And I know him to be the family barber. He always trim the, the, the younger brothers, every, every one of us, he trim us. One of the time he trimmed my brother, Solomon, and when Solomon go on the street, a DC named Pani, I don't know if anybody know Pani. He, he, he see Solomon and he say, who trim your boy? Solomon say, I'm, I'm a brother, sir. So when, when Solomon want to hear, stand up to hear what the DC have to say. The DC say, lock him up. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you, you, you know then that I don't know if his ball, his ear was ball, or if he have any cane row in it. But the DC said, lock him up, you know. But he never stopped trimming because that was his duty. 
Yes, I, I know him as a miss construction worker. I know him to be beekeeper, love bees. When I spend most of some of the times with him at the April, and sometimes when I'm ready to go home, that is the time he, when he starts to work. And when some of the time he, he, he just stop and watching the bees flying, it's like, it's like he, he loves the bees so much that he, he wants to know about them. I, I just have to appreciate him for what he has done. He has done so much for me, and I, so I'm so glad because some of the times he teach me the things that, that I should be, be go upward in life. He always have a, a wise quote. Like he says, the journey of a thousand miles begin with the first step. Right? And he, he, he would encourage me to make a move. Right? And even when I get the work at the airport, he encouraged me and said, boy, go and you will get it. You know? And he is a man who try to help. Yes, so I just want to say that he is a family man. And he, the good things that you hear about the tribute that comes, they are not false. They, they, it's true. And I am glad that he is my brother. And I am glad that I know him. And I am so proud. I know him and I respect him as a child of God. And whenever he, when he, when he was sick and couldn't communicate and losing his mind, when I went to the hospital and pray with him, he, 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 the songs that he used to sing, that is the only thing that I could get from him when I sing the songs that he used to sing in church. When I know then that he joined with me and began to sing. So the, 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 it is said that the, the Lord will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on him. It, it seems fit to take him home, God to take him home. So we, we want to rejoice and because God knows best. So I just want to thank you all for coming. And God bless you. Amen. 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 I think I would hear a louder amen. amen. You know, I, I, I sat there and I listened. That's exactly who Brother Roy is, you know. I, I came to this church and, 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 I, and I met him uh, more than 15 years ago. And I mean, exactly what Brother just said. He's a motivator. He's a loving man. He is a care. And nobody can do song service like Brother Roy. Nobody since I came here, I have not met anybody who does song service like Brother Roy. Uh, and he would sing the songs without the hymnals. He knows them from his heart. Brother Roy was a wonderful gentleman. Wonderful. You know, he, 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 he tries to encourage everybody in a good path. And today we... We celebrate with all of the family, and we miss him, but what can we do? When the time has come, we all have to go. He would have just gone just a few days or a few hours or a few minutes before me or any one of us. Amen? Amen. 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 We are now where we will hear a word from the Lord. Ah, there is no place to be than where you can hear from Jesus. There's no better place to be than where the word of the Lord is spoken. And there are others who enjoy being elsewhere. But I want to let you know that there's no better place to be than in the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, he said there's fullness of joy. And there's pleasures forevermore. Today, all that has happened and is happening, the word of God will encourage us 
and help us to know that their better days are coming. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. And so we have with us Pastor Ryan Brown, a man, a young man that is willing to do whatever the Lord desires him to do. I must tell you, he's tired, really tired like all of us, because we have just finished four weeks of crusade in Rocky Point, where we would have bring the word to Rocky Point. And many of us looked at Rocky Point as another Nineveh, but we would have gone there to lift up Jesus, that somebody could repent and turn before it is eternally too late. Today, the same thing is happening even now, are about to happen. Somebody will hear a word from the Lord. Because no matter how we look, no matter what we have, one day the word of God says we have to give an account for ourselves, the way we live, and what we would have done. And so today we have our pastor for the Lionel Town District of Churches, which include Lionel Town, Mitchell Town, Raymond's, and Portland Cottage. Today he will bring a word from the Lord to us. But before he comes, the Portland Cottage group will give us a song of meditation. And the next voice you hear will be that of the Lord speaking through his servant. So you have a wonderful day as you absorb the word of God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Glory land is not so far away, and we'll reach it some glad day. Heaven's home is not my final goal, there to live while ages roll.
Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of funeral services like Elder would have said. We want to see the Lord burst the eastern sky to come and take us home. I am so anxious to see the day when we can see death take his last breath. This cruel enemy that we have to contend with, it has taken so many of our loved ones. Sometime I wish we could just lock him in a box and throw away the keys. But there is nothing that we can do to bound him. We will have to live with death until life exists no more for us, until Jesus return. That's the only time that we'll find death out of the picture. So I want to extend condolences one more time to the family members and let you know that as a church, we have been praying for you. It's not easy to go through this moment, and I am in that process with, with you because I would have buried my grandmother last week who raised me so i am just in that process as you are so i'm looking forward to see the day when death will be no more shall we pray holy god at this time i pause to say thank you for this awesome privilege to stand before you people one more time father i pray that you'll hide me behind the cross take over Take over at this time, Lord. We pray that the message that will come for today will be one of comfort, will be one that will help somebody to realize their need for you. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to lift a word in your hearing this. Well, before I go there, Brother Addison, I came here one year, one month ago. I saw him sitting in church, always seeing Sister Olivia, or Anomaly, or Anomaly, one of those attending to him. So I only know him in his sixth state. And I've always admired the way that Sister Olivia always look out for um, Brother Addison. So I want to say to you and the family members, kudos. Revelation 21 says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a Lord, loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will, he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And the verse 4 is where I like. And God, and who? And God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, oh hallelujah. No more sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things passed away. He who sat on the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. A new beginning, a new beginning is what we're hoping for. Brothers and sisters, visiting friends and family members alike. When you look or listen to the news, even this morning, 
you can see where sin is raising its ugly head. When you look and see a 73 year old woman can take the life of her 75 year old husband over a will. Oh, because her name is not there. I want to let you know that's sin. When you look at an 80 year old who can kill his spouse, accusing her of cheating. You realize, brothers and sisters, that this troubled world cannot be our final home. And I don't know about you, but when we look and we see all that happening around us, oh, how my heart cry out for a new beginning. Oh, my heart cry out for a new heaven. Uh, we see war and war, rumor and, and, and crime all around us. Uh, when you look and see that somebody can just walk up and take the life of a next person and just walk away as if he had just greeted him. You know our world is in trouble. A husband can look at a wife and just take her life as if it's nothing. We know our world is in trouble. But I'm here to let somebody know that there is hope. Come on and say amen. There is hope today brothers and sisters. And I want somebody to understand that a better day is coming. A better day is coming. A dark day the Bible says. When our Lord shall put in his appearance. The Bible said when the eastern sky shall burst open. And the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And those who are alive and remain. We will be called up together. With those who will have been resurrected with Christ. Oh brothers and sisters. I can't wait for this wicked world to pass away. We have seen where constantly we are being exploited. We have seen where we are constantly being abused by governments. We have seen where we are constantly being harassed by the challenges of this life. But I'm here to let somebody know that one day a new heaven will be here. I'm here to let somebody know that our God will put in his appearance one day. He will walk out and nothing and say enough is enough. My children have long been abused. My children have long been through too much heartache. Now it is time for me to carry them home. Then John said, I, hey, John. I, hey, John, in vision saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And that's why when Bob Marley said that heaven is on here, on earth here, I can't agree with him. But as I, I hear my Bible tell me that heaven is coming down, the new Jerusalem is coming down to us. Oh, brothers and sisters, John said it is a dawn. It is a dawn as a bride ready for a husband if you know what a wedding looks like when a husband i've not seen his wife looking so splendor and when he saw her uh, coming down that aisle sometimes tears come from their eyes sometimes they are worried they're speechless but nonetheless brothers and sisters this cannot be compared so what heaven will be like. Oh hallelujah. I want you to see the walls of Jasper. As they are coming down. The street line we goes. As they are coming down. But not only that. But I want you to see with your, with your beatific vision. Uh, the glory of God surrounding the city. As it comes down to us. And see us the children of God. As we are changed. And made like our heavenly father. That will be a thing of the past. Pain will be a thing of the past. Crying will be a thing of the past. Funeral service will be a thing of the past. Mourning will be a thing of the past. Brothers and sisters, I want somebody to understand that a new beginning is about to happen. Tears will be no more. 
crying will be wiped away. Death will be finally put to death. Mercy. God himself will dwell with us. And wherever God dwells, death cannot stand at signs. I want you to know, look at those who when they were on their way to the, the cemetery to bury that little boy. God just passed through and death had to take its leave. Oh, brothers and sisters, when he showed up at Lazarus' grave, yes, Lazarus was dead, stiff, torn, dead for four long days. But Jesus showed up and death had to take its flight. Hear me today, somebody. When he burst the eastern sky, death will have to take its flight one more time. Oh, brothers and sisters, when we read 1 Corinthians 50, verse 26, it tells us that the last enemy that will be killed, it will be death. Oh, I can't wait to see when death will receive its last kick like Ronaldo or Messi running up to take a penalty kick. I can't wait to see when death will take his flight out of God's people life. Oh, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that there is coming a time when we will stop being exploited by our politicians, when we will stop the abuse, the, the financial rape that they have us under. That will be a thing of the past. Oh, hallelujah. Then we will need no more light. JPS, when they send us what they want to send us, there will be no more need for JPS. Oh, hallelujah. I can't wait for that day because Jesus himself will be the light. Oh, brothers and sisters, I can't wait when there will be no more funeral service, no more hearse, no more mug, no more anything whatsoever. But God himself will be there with his people. Oh, brothers and sisters, I've heard all that we have said about Brother Addison. But let me confirm to you what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, here is a patience of the saints. Here are they who kept the command, who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then he says, I heard a voice uh, from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Oh, the verse says to us, yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works Follow them. It's not that the dead, where he is at the moment, his works will follow him. No, that work is dead. But what will follow our lives on is a legacy that he had left here on earth. It doesn't matter how we occupy the space here on earth. It's what matters most is the legacy that we left after we would have been pilgrim through this troubled world that's what matters and brother Addison seemed as if he had left a good legacy for his grandchildren and his children to follow oh brothers and sisters friends alike I want you to know a day is coming when all of us will have to give an account to God. Hello, somebody. We all have to give an account to God. The life that we are living now and the breath that we are breathing now, it is God who gave it to us. Lamentation reminds us, new every morning is his love. Not only that, but his righteousness. Every day that you get up, 
you receive a fresh portion of God's righteousness. Every day you get up, you have a fresh portion of his grace given to you. So every day you are alive, you're breathing God's breath. And I want you to know there is something that you must do with God's breath as you're alive. You ought to give him praise. You ought to recognize him as your Lord and your Savior. Solomon concludes and said, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We ought to fear God. We ought to give glory to him. For this is the whole purpose of man. This is the whole reason for our existence. But brothers and sisters, some of us, we have lived our life as if we are in control of it. We live our lives as if we know what will happen to us the next moment. But hear me today. Brother Addison, he has settled his account with God. I don't know what, what, what it's in, whether it is in the red or it is in the blue. But what, whatever state it is in, it is settled. He has no more chance to settle his account. But hear me today, family members. Hear me today, those who came to give their support. You have an account to settle with God as we look forward to this new beginning. You have an account to settle with God. You got to make it right with God today. Come and do it now. That's what the songwriter says. Under the blood of Jesus, I lay my burden down. I'm inviting somebody today to make it right with God because soon and very soon when the trumpet will sound and those dead bodies being resurrected, one day you will have to give an account to God. So make it right with God today. Come and do it now. That's what the songwriter says. Under the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus. I lay my burdens down. Friends, family members, take courage. Let us as we weep. Let us not weep as those who have no hope. Jesus reminds us in John 14 verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you not I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. And Paul said to us, let us not weep as those with no hope, but let us know that one day this old troubled world, it will finally come to an end. So he says, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant or uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. The hope we have today, almost four decades ago, Brother Addison made it right with God. Is today your day? You will make it right with God? Is today your day when you recognize that you could be next in the casket? Is today the day you recognize that death is pronounced upon all of us? Is today the day you said all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Do I have a witness down there today who is saying, Pastor, I recognize that death is pronounced upon all of us. And I don't want to die in a sinful state. Do I have one down there today who is saying, Jesus, I want to make it right with you today. Is there a witness down there? You heard the word. You heard the message. It's up to you to choose what you do with it. But just know a new beginning 
is on the horizon. Get ready because it is coming as sure as day follows night. Get ready for the coming of our Lord. Ah, oh, what a word. What a word. What a reminder. Thank you, Jesus. God would have reminded us to his servant that there's a new day coming. There's a new dawning when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He shall come to claim his people from their sins. Today, we just want to give God thanks for the word that he has sent us and the reminder to remind us that we are not our own. We belong to Jesus. And we must completely surrender ourselves to him so he can do for us that which no doctor, no politician, no parents, no father, no friend can do. Only Jesus alone. We are now where most people love to hear the eulogy. We want to hear Brother Roy lifestyle before this day comes. And today we are right now where we would we'll hear that. And it, it will be read by Andrea Ansom. Thank you. Great afternoon. Roy James Addison was born on February 3rd, 1945 in Portland Cottage, Clarendon. He is the third child of Lenora Bartley and Nathan Addison. Most of you may know him as Brother Roy or Brother Addison. During his cherished childhood years, he attended Portland Cottage All Age School where he eagerly embraced learning and formed lasting friendships. Even at a young age, he displayed a strong sense of responsibility, often running errands for his family, delivering fruits, fresh fruits, for his mother with a smile that lit up the neighborhood. It wasn't long before he became affectionately known as daddy within the community a testament to his nurturing and caring nature. Throughout his early years, he remained a beacon of goodness, embodying kindness and respect in all interactions, setting a beautiful example for those around him. Roy's journey through life led him to, a, to the beautiful formation of his immediate family, a testament to his love, it, love's enduring power. In the tender embrace of his first love and childhood sweetheart, Alice Ankle, he discovered a connection that would shape his world. Their shared path blossomed into parenthood. As Alice gave him the incredible gift of two sons, John and Wayne, long before their vo marriage vows were exchanged. It was in the year of 1982 that their bond was officially sanctified through marriage, a commitment that deepened their connection even further. As the chapters of their lives unfold, the family grew with the addition of two beloved daughters, Olivia and Rosemary. Together, they woven a tapestry of love, strength, unity, embracing the joys and the challenges that life presented as the unite as a united force his life's path with canvas his life's path was a canvas painted with a diverse array of careers 
each serving as a tribute to his relentless determination and unyielding work ethic. From his days as a fisherman, navigating the open waters with skill and patience, to, the time, to his time as a meticulous mason, leaving an indelible mark on projects, including working on structure at the main bauxite company, the Willeding Community's formative stages, in Veer, and contributing to, his, to the Monument Sugar Factory, conducting broiler repairs under contract. His hands knew the art of carpentry, and a different chapter led him into the paper industry, where he became an integral part of the paper factory. But his journey didn't stop there. The halls of the Norman Mandy International Airport in Kingston witness his presence as a red cap portal, a role that embodied his warmth and helpful nature. During his initial time as a red cap portal, he resided in Kingston, yet his ambitions reached beyond the shores, his shores. The allure of distant lands beckoned, and his and he answered the call not once but twice, journeying to England on working holidays. These travels weren't just about work. They were a testament to his curiosity and willingness to embrace new experiences and cultures. Roy returned to Clarendon to assist his sibling with the care of his mother, which was when he discovered the opportunity to become a steward of nature, embrace, embracing the art of bee farming as a reflection of his harmony with the world around him. Bee farming being a passion, and he did it very well. He also, with Alice, started the ambition, ambitious venture of operating a shop. Though undertaken with determination, unfortunately faced with hardships of an unforgiving market, and had to close its doors. Above all else, his various career choices were intricately woven together by a singular profound motivation, providing for his family. He had a resolute dedication to ensure the well-being and comfort of his loved ones. Though the high, through the highs and the lows of his diverse pursuits, the common thread remained his unwavering desire to offer his family a better life, a better future, and a foundation of security and happiness. In every laborious effort and every long day's work, work he forged a legacy of sacrifice and devotion that resonates through the generation he leaves behind. Throughout his remarkable journey, he encountered his fair share of challenges and obstacles that tested his resilience and steadfast spirit. The fury of Hurricane Ivan in 2004 brought floods that sweeped away stability. The tempest rage stripped both his home and business of their roofs. Yet another time in 2007, Hurricane Dean, the family house was stripped of its roof. But in these moments of darkness, he remained steadfast. He remained a steadfast beacon of strength, guiding his family through storms with words of wisdom and encouragement. His mantra echoed like a steadfast lighthouse to accept, to accept life's challenges with grace, to find solace in prayer, and to relentlessly work hard to rebuild what was lost. As the years advanced, he faced new battles, this time with his own eyesight. Yet his indomit indomitable spirit refused to be dimmed by encroaching darkness. Even as his vision and memory faltered, his outlook on life remained undiminished, a testament of his remarkable strength. His perseverance through every obstacle served as a powerful lesson to his loved ones, a reminder that no matter what the trials that life may present, one's determination and unswerving resolve can illuminate every day even the darkest parts. 
His dedication and sense of responsibility extended beyond his immediate family and to his, commu and to his community he held there. Recognizing the importance of nurturing the next generation, he became a guiding light for the youth, generously providing resources and support to empower them on their educational journeys and uh, as the need arose. Whether it was through mentorship, advice, or simply a lending ear, his impact resonated far beyond the boundaries of his own life, shaping a legacy of compassion and community involvement that will continue to flourish in the hearts and lives of those he touched. In 2009, Roy's wife, Alice, left this world. Roy took on the responsibility of caring for his four children. In 2012, he remarried his second wife, Phyllis Bailey, who also passed from this world before he did in 2017. Roy brought a heart full of laughter and infectious joviality. He effortlessly lifted the spirits and created an atmosphere of joy. He often quoted, why go through life sad when you can laugh? He, he could often be heard singing, and you bet he loves singing in the shower too. His grandchildren recounts that when he is refreshed after his showers, he would sing, he could sing the entire afternoon and couldn't, and no one better disturb him. A lover of good vibes and music, he would often be singing, seen dancing, and would say, when the music hits you, you feel no pains. His hobbies speaks to his zest for life. Singing and dancing were just pastimes, but expressions of his boundless enthusiasm. Roy loved public speaking, especially on joyous occasions of wedding. That was a reflection of his ability to connect with people and share in their moments of happiness. This encapsulates his philosophy of embracing life's pleasures and finding solace in the simple joys. Roy's spirit, reson Roy's spirit resonated through his laughter, his melodies, his words, leaving an enduring imprint on the heart of all who had the privilege of knowing him. Roy James Addison died at home on July 31st, 2023, after being hospitalized for a few weeks after, after suffering from a stroke. He, sur he is survived by four children, 12 grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, three step-grandchildren, five step-great-grandchildren, four brothers, and one sister. The world is a sadder place without Roy James Addison, who has touched each and every one of our lives and left memories which, will, which we will cherish forever. We, the family, would like to thank everyone for coming to celebrate the life of Roy James Addison. We would also want to thank the following individuals who cared for and helped the family navigate Roy's life until his last moments. Garth, Sonia, Magdalene, Patricia, and Norman. We, would ap we really appreciate your efforts in taking care of Brother Roy in his time of need. One, two. Good 
afternoon to everyone. I am Beryl Simit, and I'm asked to give the prayer for the family, the bereaved family. But I'm also here to add a tribute towards Brother Roy. I am also asked from Angela Roxborough, who were living at Jackson's Bay, to extend condolence to the family. Okay, I'll read the tribute that I'm going to give also on behalf of my son, Dalton Gregory, who asked me to do it because he have experienced kindness from Brother Roy. And it reads like this. Tribute for the late Roy James Addison. Brother Roy had been a very close friend to my family. As I can remember as a little boy, I remember Brother Roy, his mother, Aunt Lena. There was a very tight link between the family and my family. Our parents, they were church members. It says, the family as it was, they were related in some ways. Church brothers, as you hear, they call Brother Roy. They would not say Roy, but we are always calling him Brother Roy. Brother Roy became a spiritual father to me when I gave my life to the Lord. He would encourage me whenever I felt like I'm giving up and would pray for me and with me. My parents migrate to the United States and Brother Roy was like a father to me. I remember I took sick to a point that no one understand what was wrong with me. Brother Roy came to look for me and it was on a Sabbath I could recall my mental state of mind was going out. But this man, he got me dressed. He took me to the private doctor in Maypen. Brother Roy never leave me. And he took care of me. The medicine that I was supposed to get, the prescription was filled by him. And when it needed refilling, he did it again. It was, I was well enough to come back to church. He sent a barber to got me, get my hair cut and got me dressed. He picked me up and he bring me to church. There are many, many kindness about Brother Roy. I could go on and on. There was also a time when my parents wanted for me to come to the United States. I needed a bank statement, and Brother Roy helped me. This I shall always be grateful. You realize that Brother Roy Addison was not just an ordinary man. He was a man that had a heart of sympathy, a heart of compassion. He is one that will look in you when others look down on you and say that you have no hope. He will take you to himself and said, let me tell you this, there is always hope. That's who was Brother Roy. Of myself, I want to let you know, my husband took sick and he was into the Spanish town hospital I remember Brother Roy, he came to my home and he said, 
Sister Simit, do you have any money? And before I could say yes or no, he handed me $500 and said, use it until whenever you can give me back. Let me tell you, when you get $500 in those days, it was money. When I say money, it was money. Even this tribute, I have further to go, but I am not going any further. I just want to give you the high points. You also helped my son going to Brownstown, and he wanted to go there to seek a job. It cost $200 for the fare those days. $200, took you to Brownstown, come back to Clarendon. Can you imagine these days that we are living in? $200 is just from here to Lionel Town and not back. It's just to go. Brothers and sisters and family and friend, I am saying today, Brother Roy Addison, was a good man. There was a time in my life when he comes to me and said, Sister Simit, don't worry. Don't worry. Smile. God is able. And may his soul rest in peace. Let me pray for the family. I don't know the order what the church wants, if all should sit or how should stand. I don't know. It was not given. But I would ask that the church stand at this time and the family members sit. Let us pray. Loving Father, our God, Jehovah is your name. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. We adore you. We adore you in sickness. We adore you in death. For you are the great I am, the mighty comforter, the one that have power to relieve every pain of sadness. I place into your hand and in your care today your children, the Addison's family. You know, God, everything about your people, wherever they are today. I hear his daughter sing, and it brings tears to my eye. I know before she was even born, Rosie Addison, the days when this church were led by her, as a choir director. Father, we give the family to you. I can name the four children, but you know their names. You know where they are. In a special way and grandchildren, I pray, mighty God, that you will cover them and you will sustain them and you will help them to prosper. Mighty God, I give them to you. Help them to look beyond this day, the day when they are mourning the death of their loved ones, their father, their uncle, their brother, whoever he is to them. Help them to look towards the day when, at, as it is said before I pray, that the time is coming when there will be no more death no more sorrow, no more crying, and no more pain. May they be ready for that day that when you shall burst the skies to claim your people, they will be ready to go home with you. Whether in debt, they will arise first. And if they're alive, they will change in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, for they will meet their Savior. I give this family to you today. Mighty God, you know and you see any problem that exists between the family. I beg you today, Father, that you will solve them. For you are the problem solver. And you know how to do what no other can do. 
There is no lawyer can do what you can do. There is no doctor to do what you can do for you are able. May your blessings rest upon them. May their ways be acceptable in your sight. And may everything according to your will be done to them. I give the Addison's family to you today. Have your way now. And bless the family of the whole soul of faith, your people. May we hold on. Hold on. It won't be long. Hold on. It won't be long. For you are coming again. And you are coming soon. And very soon. Thank you Lord. For hearing and answering this our prayer. In the name above all names. The name that when I hear it. It seems like music in my ear. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. My Lord. And my God. Thank you. Amen. We're about to get out of here and to the final place of internment. And that's the family plot just up the road. You would have seen a recessional M in your program. However, Rosie would have sent something that she would like for us to play on our way out. So at this time, I'm just going to ask the Paul Bearers to take up their position. And as you have been a well-behaved audience thus far, I ask that we continue on this path. So as the, the song is played and the Paul Bearers take up their position, the pastor followed by the earth will journey over to the burial spot. time for us as family we have to realize that no matter what we're going through God will always work it out my dad used to he's always a strong tenor singer and I learned to sing alto by just singing on Saturday evenings or on Saturday at church with him so as I try to harmonize with my sister here. I hope that whatever we're feeling or whatever we're going through, that we just have that hope that we know. No matter what we're going through, God will always work it out. My dad used to love harmony singing he's always a strong tenor singer and I learned to sing alto by just singing on Saturday evenings or on Saturday at church with him so as I try to harmonize with my sister here I hope that whatever we're feeling or whatever we're going through that we just have that hope that we know that God will always work it out. Before I knew my name, before I drew a breath, he was making ways for me. Now and every day, in each and every step, He's still making ways for me when my heart 
is full of doubt Feels like faith is running out I've come too far to turn around I know to relieve He's still making ways for me He won't let me down He'll never ever leave He's still making ways for me When my heart is full of doubt Feels like faith is running out I've come too far 